remember uh, J.D. Young? Amen. Little J.D. Young. Amen. She's going through a lot of pain, cancers. Amen. It's a, it's a battle. Amen. We're watching this battle. Front row. Front row seats. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what. When God reacts, when God does, amen, bring her out of this. I said, when God does, bring her out of this. Amen. Not only is she going to have something to praise God about, amen, but the choir behind her, amen. Those that have been lifting her up in prayer are going to be able to see, amen, how strong, amen, our God is. Amen. Amen. Let's keep J.D. on in prayer, not just here today, amen, but in your prayer life at home, please. Keep J.D. Young in prayer. Let's also remember Janice. Amen. Still going through situations. Amen. With her seizures. I mean, she's not having seizures. That's amen. Good thing. Amen. We'll take that. Praise amen. God. We'll take that. Praise God. Praise God. We know she has up and down spells. Amen. Amen. But let's just give God praise in advance. Amen. Let's just glorify God for, amen, just being God. Sometimes our blessing comes up in the prayer. When we start to praise, the blessings come down. Amen. But what we don't want to do is feel defeated. Amen. I say what we don't want to do is throw in the towel. Yeah. Amen. Be like, you know what? He hasn't done it yet, and he's not going to do it, and right. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give up. Right. Amen. Right. The devil wants nothing more than you to give You're up. Right. You're right. Amen. Because right. right. it's in your giving up. Amen. You could just be one prayer away yeah. from that answer. Yeah. Praise God. I'm not going to let the devil steal my blessing. <laughs> he's not getting my joy. Praise God. Praise God. That was a liar. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We need to call him out on that. Amen. Because we are victorious. And the reason why we are victorious is because he's victorious. Amen. I believe that this morning. Praise God. So, J.D. Yana, Janice, anyone else today want to challenge God? Amen. Praise God. Go ahead, Sister Connie. Um, Sister Dolores, her husband is still not well, so we can keep them in prayer. Yes. Amen. Sister Dolores. Go ahead, Sister. Yes. Amen. Yes, it says. Praise God. Amen. 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 Come expecting. Amen. Come just 
Amen. <laughs> it's a good place to just, just throw your prayer requests out when everybody's here. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. Uh, for Brother Steve, he uh, got COVID. Mm. So he's Stevie. Yeah, yes. He's not feeling well. Yes. Wow. Amen. Brother Stevie, amen. I've seen him for a while. Amen. Got hit with COVID. Amen. All that stuff was over, but uh, yeah, seems like he's taking around. Yeah. Amen. He's not trying to go anywhere. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray for his health. Amen. Amen. So, um, I haven't heard many people dying from it now. It just seems like it's a lot milder. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Praise God. Let's remember my children. I want to keep them in prayer always. Amen. Salvation. Amen. And they would go back to church. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Lord, we're trusting that you have to thank you today. We're trusting you, Lord. We know, God, that you are able to do all things, God. We know, Lord, that when it looks impossible in our eyes, Lord, it's a miracle of yours, God. You see the things that we don't see. Lord, you know things we do not know. Lord, you know these bodies, God, that the doctors are going to know. Lord, we're going to put them in your hands. Lay it to me today, God. Lord, you're the one, God, that's able Lord, to bring us out better in the end, God. Lord, I pray to deal with Jamie, Lord. Lord, you see her situation. You see the needs in her body, God. Lord, she's a young child, Lord. Lord, that has distributed cancer. Lord, cancer is a battle in her life, God. Lord, but I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to you, God. Lord, that you would set them free, Lord. Lord, that the spirit of her life, God. The enemy is a battle. Lord, we know, God, that there's many things, God. Lord, that we can have no control over in this world, God. Lord, but I'm going to sacrifice my people to you, God. Lord, no one can pray for God. Lord, I pray for God. Lord, for this is the Lord is in her husband, God. Lord, I pray God that you will be there for them. Lord, in their sickness, God. Lord, I know God that you pray for us. Lord, I know God that you have a plan for their bodies, God. Lord, I pray for Jesus' body, Lord. Lord, you know God that you have a plan for their bodies. You know, Lord, the situation that you have for us. Lord, we pray for God that you pray for us. Lord, you know God that you have a plan for us. Lord, you're doing the rest of our lead, Lord. Lord, she's been there. Lord, there's a trip taken out, Lord. I pray, God, that you would be there, Lord. Show her, God, that you're a real, true God. Lord, that you have everything under control, God. Let her place to be built up, Lord, in this situation, God. Lord, we're weak, you're we strong, God. Lord, today we're coming to you with problems, battles, tribulations, challenges, Lord. Lord, that we can all be on our own. We need the strength, God. We need the Holy Ghost, God. COVID today. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us. Lord, do the sickness, God, that is affecting many people in this world. Lord, but I know, God, there is no sickness, God. There is no disease, God, that you cannot conquer. Lord, I'm putting it in your hands today, God, and I'm going to give you things in advance, God, for what you're doing. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We're praising you, God, for what you're doing. We give you the things, God, for all that you do. In the blessed name of Jesus, God, can we love the Lord this morning? Can we love the Lord this morning?
never given up on us. He's never given up, guys. Amen. Praise God. We want to go to timing and offering. Amen. The church appreciates everyone who's giving. Amen. Amen. Not just those that are giving. Amen. I know times are hard nowadays and money is something that, amen, it's a struggle in a lot of people's homes. Amen. Amen. God loves sacrifice, though, and we just, sometimes that's the way we're going to pull through. It's a sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Even though sometimes you don't have, I'll be honest with you, those are the times that you find it's more cheerful to give when you don't have that. When you don't have it, but you know it's going for the purpose of what the Bible tells us it's going for. And that's, that's for the whole house of God. Amen. This The money that the church receives does not go to just uh, um, to just frivolous things. Amen. Amen. I don't like this. It's not, it's, it's not in my hands. It's, but I, I trust my pastor and I trust the church. Amen. Amen. This is the thing that takes care of everything situations of the church. Amen. Amen. So we should be cheerfully given. Amen. Amen. Knowing that we have a place to come to. Amen. Praise God. God's an awesome God. He's faithful. And we want to Amen. Just give up to the Lord today. Those that are going online, the church appreciates everybody that's, that's giving online. Amen. You go to the website, greatcommissionpc.org at any time, not just on Sundays. You can just go there anytime. Amen. To give your tithing and offering. Um, at the bottom, the, the donate tab is uh, just hit that and amen. Do what you feel. Amen. Amen. Also, there's a cash app you can do. Um, and also today we're just going to the baskets as well. Amen. 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 Praise God. Lord, we love you. We trust you. Lord, everyone in this house, everyone that's watching online, Lord, I pray that you will bless their home, God. Lord, in uncertain times where things look like it's scary, Lord, I remind you of the lady that gave it, Lord, all she had. Lord, she didn't have much, but you said, Lord, out of everyone, she gave it the most, God. And when she literally gave, blessed everyone. Lord, now that's all, Lord, she gave from her heart, God. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that we can have that same giving spirit, God. Lord, and we know, God, it's going to go for great purposes, God. There's people in the city, Lord, that need help. There's people in the city that need direction, God. Lord, this church wants to be a beacon of light, Lord, to everyone around us, God. We love you, we thank you, we praise you for what you're going to do. In the precious name of the Lord, amen. Shake hands with one another. Let them know that you're glad you're here today. Amen. Come give up to the Lord. Amen.
Uh, if you only want to go to just one session, each session is $20. There's a Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, and a Saturday morning session. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. We had a baptismal here about two weeks ago. Brother Matthew Marchbanks was baptized. And praise God. Let me just tell you, you know, you, you baptize a lot of people, and, and then sometimes you just have to just stop and pause when you're baptizing somebody because the appreciation for what's happening is understood. Right. And you see that. And I, uh, with Brother Matthew, I'm not trying to embarrass him or anything, but that was, I could see that. And we, that were there, just a, a beautiful thing just to watch as somebody's just receiving the forgiveness that God is, yes. 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 is giving. Yes. This is how he's designed it. Yes. Now, people think that they can do it a lot of ways better. Some people think they can do it better, and they have given all their different examples and ways of doing that. But this is how God chose to do it. Right. This is why he shed his blood. Yes. Yes. He sacrificed right. himself. Right. And what a wonderful Amen. thing. Well, Matthew, if you'll come down, I have a certificate for you. Praise God. We'd like to embarrass you. Praise God. God is awesome. Awesome. Amen. Praise God. And I want to mention this before I forget. Tuesday is our our our, um, our fasting day on Tuesdays, and uh, it's every Tuesday, you know. But we don't really, um, unless there's something that's pressing, and there is today. And I want to just mention this to everybody. I went to see Jadiana last yesterday in the hospital at Children's Hospital, and uh, the the condition here, they're not sure what's going on. There's a lot of fluid, as you know, in her back. But they think that's possible that those tumors are liquefying. Come on. That's all I needed to hear. I had a mask on. They didn't see how excited I was. But I was, I was very excited. I know there's been a lot of prayer going on. But they think that's what's happening. Those, and there's a bunch of them still in her lungs, little pieces of that, those tumors in her lungs. And so they're liquefying. And there's liquid at the bottom of her lungs. So let's just pray for her. Let's continue to pray for her. They're monitoring the liquid and just making sure it doesn't get too much so that they have to drain it in some way. But I just looked at that as, as a positive thing. Come on. Amen. Come on. Praise God. We saw the God that can do it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So on Tuesday, we're going to fast. Anybody that, listen, the way we do the fast is... We're going we're gonna to go all day. If you can go all day, that's fine. It's just between you and the Lord. But we're going to talk to God. You know, during your, your, your meal times that you're going to sacrifice, if it's one meal, two meals, three meals, whatever, just spend some time talking to God during that time about Jadion. About other things, too, but about Jadion. Let's just, let's just press in. Because I just want to see this happen for her and her family. And uh, it's just an awesome thing to see the hand of God move. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We get encouragement. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Let's remember Brother Ralph as well. I, I don't know the latest of that. If you can just let us know. I, I go take my, my CT scan uh, of my brain uh, on the 26th. Okay. And then uh, once we find out what is actually going on, and um, then they want me to see the dermatologist per what is going on. Sure. Then we'll go from there. Okay. Let's, we're going to ask you to come up and pray for you today. You know, you can't get away with that. Being here, it's going to happen. Praise God. But we're going to pray the prayer of faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Believing God yes. is going to touch you. Everybody just point your hand up this way. Men, feel free to come up and join me.
lift our hands and give God some thanks. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now for what you're doing. We thank you for the power that you do. Thank God. You heal all manner of diseases, God. There's nothing too hard for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, we're being victorious, God. Hallelujah. Mm, there's nothing like Jesus. There is God. He'll stand this morning. Hallelujah. And turn your Bibles. Hallelujah. So we're glad to have Brother Jose and Sister Myra here today. Yes, amen. 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 So if you'll turn to Matthew chapter 25, we are going to take a verse of scripture from this chapter. Now this is, uh, I'll give the setting a couple of parables that Jesus talks about uh, the kingdom in this 25th chapter of Matthew. He says here in Matthew chapter 20, 25 and verse number 23, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. And then perhaps the key word. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. If you'll skip down about seven verses to verse number 30. And we're going to read that verse as well. A little bit different ending, different scenario. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Praise God. Let's put our Bibles down today. Let's talk to the Lord for a moment. Father, we love you. We're so thankful, God, to come before your presence, Lord God. Purchased by your blood, Lord. You've done great things in our lives, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch us today, Lord God, to, Lord, to get our minds, Lord, to gird up the loins of our minds, God, to focus our energies and our attention, Lord, on your word, God. I pray that you would have your way to touch us today, Lord. Open our hearts to receive what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to preach to you as you're being seated for the next few moments from this thought. After life. Yes. Come on. What's next? After life, what's next? You know, these were some, that last verse that we read, those were some terrible words to hear. Just think about this. You stand before God, you, individual, and He says, I don't want you in my heaven. Can you imagine the disappointment? That's that's a that's the the most inappropriate word to describe how you would feel at that moment when he would say, You can't make it. You didn't make it. You know, there's some disappointments throughout history, and, and Adam and Eve, perhaps theirs is, is one of, of shocking disappointment as well. Here they are, and Eve doesn't know anything about someone's out to trick her. She doesn't know that she's being tricked or deceived, but she ends up doing what she was told not to do. And as soon as she does it, the guilt's there. And now they hear the words of God saying, get out of the garden. They've never been outside of the garden. They've never... So here, this disappointment, this that they disappointed God, they felt terrible, they even hid from Him. But now they were being kicked out because He was disappointed in them. There have been many, many situations throughout life where, throughout history, where people have disappointed. You know, God came and talked to their son came just before he was about to do something terrible. And God says, listen, if you do good, it will be good for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. It will go good with you. But if you don't, sin 
lies at the door. And yet for all of that, he still pushed ahead with his pride, his stubbornness, and ended up killing his brother. What a disappointment. And God told him, he says that somebody, you're a marked man. Whoever sees Cain is going to kill him. Disappointments. Disappointments. But there's no disappointment that comes even close to that disappointment. I don't want anybody here to hear those words. And God doesn't want anybody to ever hear those words. You know that? The Bible says that hell was never created for God for people. It was created for Satan that rebelled against God. But yet and still, man has pushed his own agenda. Given rules by God, given something that God wanted him to live in some kind of confines or some kind of discipline, man has always pushed those boundaries and gone over to the other side to see what's over there. And of course, Adam and Eve did that. They were the first. And man has done it ever since. But you know, there's a couple things that people ignore in this whole thought of what's after life. After I'm done here, what is there? The Bible is full of explanation. Yeah. It's full of telling us what is there, what this is all about. Because, you know, every one of us know people that live so long and they're not here. Every one of us. So it's just a part of life. Living is, dying is a part of life. We have people that die every day. And, you know, probably every five years you know somebody close to you that died. Or something like that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so it's a part of this. But there has to be more. There's, there's something definitely more. And the Word of God screams at us. Right. He tells us. And if we're able to receive it, we're able to prepare ourselves for that next life. Mm -hmm. After life. After this one. We're able to prepare ourselves. You know, Jesus looked at... At, at Nicodemus, who came to him by night, in John 3 and 3, it says, you have to be born again. Right. The standard is being born again. So it's a word. It has a meaning. It's a phrase, rather. It has a meaning. What is the meaning? And Nicodemus struggles to understand that. And Jesus, in the next, next, uh, the next time Jesus speaks is two verses later. And he says, born again involves being born of water and of spirit. Jesus goes on to talk. Gets down to John 3.16, about 11 verses next, later. And he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And Satan, who wants as many people to join him in hell as possible. Right has sown seeds. Jesus called them tares. Tares don't get you any fruit. Tares don't have anything that's of nutritional value in them. But yet still they're sown in interspersely with seed, with good wheat and good things that would actually be nutritious and all that, but they're sown right in the middle there. And in one parable, Jesus says, you know, they come and say, shall we take the tares out? Shall we grab the tares and take them out? Jesus says, no, let them both grow together. I'll separate them at the end. But Satan has sown all kind of mischievous things within the Christian world. Yeah, the Bible says that deception in the last day is going to be so bad yeah. that if it were possible, even the very ones that make it to heaven yeah. would be deceived. Mm -hmm. That's pretty bad if you think about that. There's Jesus, he knows who's going to make it. He knows exactly who's going to be there. But he says deception in the last day is going to be of such a nature that it's going to even deceive, if it was possible, they would be deceived too. How is that? Well, deception happens, especially in things of teaching or doctrine or stuff like that. It happens by somebody sowing a seed, going off the beaten path, changing things up a little bit, ever so slight change way back in the past. When it comes to the future, to where we're at, it's totally different. About the third century, the Nicene Council, I guess it would actually be the fourth century, so 326 yeah. AD, yeah. the Nicene Council, 
a council that was pulled together by Constantine, the then emperor. And the whole purpose of this is getting a united church. They had persecuted the church for all these years, the, cat, the, uh, the Roman Empire. Even Nero in 70 AD had burned Jerusalem, or burned Rome, and blamed it on the Christians. How convenient. And they were always going to be ostracized. But now a new emperor came along to sustain the empire and to try to unite forces and do it around something other than just military. And he used the the religious or the moral backings, the beliefs of the people to do this. Right. And so he called a council. But that council was loaded with people that had a new understanding. <clears throat> Outside and different from the understanding that the apostles had during the first century. The ones that wrote the book, the ones that Jesus met with on a mountain and gave instructions to. Right, right. So these Catholic bishops and the different ones had different understandings. They were all called together for this meeting. Yeah. And they believed in what then became, after a couple centuries, because it wasn't actually crystallized then, right. they believed in the Trinity. Yeah. The problem with this doctrine, when you just spin it you know, forward to today, the overwhelming majority of people that embrace that cannot accept what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. It's impossible. Because when they begin to think that there is a father that is a person, a son that is another person, and a Holy Ghost that is another person, when Peter says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, they can't accept that because they think that, hey, we're leaving two of the people out. Hallelujah. And see, that's how heresy gets started. Yeah. That's how a doctrine gets started that really blows the, the lid off things and you cannot actually obey what the Word of God says because you find fault in it. Yeah. Now, I've had people actually tell me, I'd rather obey Jesus than obey Peter. But that falls on its face when you understand that Peter was the one that Jesus picked to be the spokesman That's right. yeah. because of his revelation knowledge. Right, right, right. So at some point, that, that falls apart. And when you understand that the disciples are the ones that heard what Jesus said. Right. It was an exclusive meeting on a mountain, and Jesus gave them this understanding, and they go from that mountain understanding, and they begin to implement it on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Yes. And everybody has always been baptized in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, Paul picked it up, the most astute and learned theologian throughout the entire Bible, perhaps. Paul was quite a sharp fellow. And when he got a hold of him, he says, For as many of us have been baptized into Jesus Christ, have been baptized into his death. In other words, the connection with his death on Calvary is baptism in his name. Right. He made that connection. He made that statement. That powerful statement. Yeah. Yeah. And so, a lot of people say that I'm going to wait until judgment. And they don't just say it on doctrinal things. They say it on other things like lifestyle. You, 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 you say something about their lifestyle. The Word of God kind of says this about your lifestyle, what you're doing. Not that we're out judging people, but you, you don't need to be silent either. Right. John the Baptist could have at least have just been a you know, baptizer, right? He could have just did his job, right? right, right. Stay in his lane, as it were. Right. Right. But he did. Come on. He looked at Herod and said, it is not right for you to have your brother's wife. Herod wasn't even a Jew. He was just sent there, put in place by the Roman Empire to watch over the Jews. But he had his brother's wife. He said, it ain't right. And that's what he lost his head for, not for baptizing people. He was known for baptizing. He introduced the whole concept. God used him to do that. But he lost his head because he got in their business. But he spoke truth. God wants us to speak truth. God wants us to say what's right, what's wrong. Because if you don't say anything, you know what happens? People fall headlong into sin. And they just keep it going. And the devil has his way in their lives. Mm -hmm. So we have to say something. But you can't wait until you get to judgment to right. determine right. if things are okay. Right. Right. Because at judgment, you will be judged. That's right. And you know, the merciful God that we love and we, we, we speak about and we preach about and we sing about right. becomes, he dons another, another robe That's altogether. Right. Right. He's merciful. Right. But then he puts on a, another robe, the robe of judgment. And at judgment, 
He just comes right down the line. The mercy of God has already been shown. Has, has already been sent forth. Yeah. And we yeah. can grab a hold of that mercy today. It's, it's abundant for every one of us. There's not a sin that you can ever commit that God doesn't forgive you from. He will forgive us. Praise God. He loves us. His mercy endures, the Bible says, forever to all generations. Praise God. The Bible says some men's sins go before them to judgment and some go with them to judgment. You want to be in the former category. You do not want to die with your sins and then go before God with those sins all there and have him to judge you. Because if that happens, then it's a foregone conclusion. You'll be the latter. But you know, there's a couple places where Jesus, he's very, very succinct. And he says this to some people. And, and, and um, he says that unless you believe that I am he, right. you're going to die right. in yes. your yes. sins. And this is in, in Matthew chapter 8. He says, unless you believe that I'm he, you'll die in your sins. You know why? Because you won't do what it takes to get your sins washed away. If, if you're under this illusion that Jesus isn't the one that's able to wash your sins away, vis-a-vis uh, -vis baptism in his name, if you're under the illusion that there's something else that makes that happen, is what Jesus is saying. When you get to judgment and you have not done that, then what's going to happen is your sins are still attached to you. Jesus looked at Pharisees. And he said to those Pharisees, unless you believe that I'm he. And they said, who are you? He says, the one I told you from the beginning. He says in, in John uh, 12, 45, when you see me, you see the one that sent me. And so there are people that for different reasons, different Maybe they buy into a certain theological reason or whatever, and they don't end up getting their sins washed away. When they stand before God in judgment someday, those sins are still there. Praise God. And they have to be dealt with. And God is going to deal with them. And God is going to be a God of judgment and not a God of mercy at that point. But he has to be that way. He has to be true to his word. His word has to say what it says and mean what it says. But in Matthew chapter 25, our verse that we, we read, this is one of those places where we get to see what happens when judgment is over and you've made it in. And he says these words, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And that's the, that's, those are the words we want to hear. Well done. You've made right. it in. Yeah. I want to hear well done someday. I want God, yeah. you know, to, to tell me that well done. Yeah. Everybody yeah. longs to hear that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But there is so much distraction. There are so many things in this world that distract people and get people to the place that they're going to hear, a lot of people are going to hear the other words. In verse number 30 says, he's not even talking to the servant. He talks to his servants, or to his angels, and says, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There were five foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25, and it opens up. The Bible says there were ten virgins. Five were foolish, five were wise. They all kept themselves. They all qualified. They all were under that same category of virgins. Meaning that they were preparing. They were preparing to meet him. They were, they, their lives were in order. They were ready to meet him. But what happened is five of them decided that I don't have to have oil in my lamp. I can get some at the last minute. I don't have to keep oil. You know, this... this, this particular parable of Jesus is one of the scariest. Because you see so much sameness between all of these people, these ten. There's a lot of sameness. But there's one thing that's missing. Some have the oil and some don't. 
You know, Paul says, be ye not drunk in, with wine wherein there is excess. In other words, you can get too much wine. But then he, he, uh, he juxtaposes that with this. He says, but be ye filled That's right. yes. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be filled That's with right. the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. If I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, then my carnal flesh, if, I, if I'm in the Spirit, the Bible says there's no condemnation to them that walk after the Spirit, not the flesh. You know why he says that? Because everybody has walked after the flesh and made mistakes. Yeah. Right. Everybody. But he says, if you're walking after the Spirit, praise God. Hallelujah. There's no condemnation. The devil doesn't get to come up to you and say, remember what you did? Mm. You know, he likes to go fishing in that place, that, that sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that God purposefully forgets. When he forgives our sins. He purposefully forgets. Right. You know why he does that? And I'll tell you why. I, I, can, I can tell you this one. The reason God purposely forgets is because if he didn't, then every time he sees you, he would see that sin. Just like you and me. We see somebody, we say we forgave him. But if you don't forget and force yourself to push that aside and deal with that, then what happens is every time you think about that person, you think about the sin. You think about the wrongness. You think about what they did to you. And all of a sudden you have this stuff that's, that you said, I, I forgave them. But you, it came back up. Yeah. Just a side note on forgiveness. You have to, every time you remember, I forgave. I forgave. You know why? Because every time you remember what you did wrong, God forgave. You can remember that one, right? It's a, you, you, we can easily remember, God forgave me. You know, the devil don't try to bring that up to me. Well, we got to do the same thing with other people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. We have to be that same way. As a matter of fact, God commands us. If we want his forgiveness, we've got to forgive. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the tough, that's one of the toughest lessons in life. That's one of the toughest lessons in life because as you go through life and, and maybe someone does something that, that's unprecedented in your life that never happened before, and now you're struggling with that. But God says, you know what? I forgave you, so you have to forgive. Right. He says that this, this, is, this salvation thing, it works that way. Yes. If you don't forgive, I take my forgiveness back from you. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. That's the way it works. And that, that's, a, that's a tough thing, but, but it's, it's a thing of mercy. God wants us to have the mercy. God wants us to have the mercy that he has. Yeah, right. right. He wants us to operate in that type of mercy. Praise God. Because it changes you as a person. The Bible says that we are to bear the infirmities of the weak. If someone sins against you, that's, that's a weakness. And you know what God says? You don't get this hard and hard and just say, well, I never can forgive them. No. God wants you to do like he did. When you sin, when you make mistakes on a daily basis, and you ask forgiveness. Peter says, he says, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? If he sins against me in the same day, seven times? Jesus says, 70 times seven. 490 times. The, the same sin. You know? But God is telling us, he's, he's being a little ridiculous, but he's telling us through that, he's telling us through that, you have to have an open heart of forgiveness. Because I do. Because it doesn't make sense. Sometimes, you think to yourself, God can't forgive me that easy. Has anybody felt that way ever? God can't forgive me that easy. I just It just feels yeah. like it's not. Yeah. Yeah. But he does. He does because he loves us. Praise God. And everything that God does is to get us to that place. Amen. Praise God. When we're standing before him, and all of our sins are on his back. All right. All of our sins he's born. All of our sins are on him. And we stand before him as righteous. Mm. Praise God. That's the point. That's, that's the point that God wants. Praise God. When we stand before him, we stand before him righteous all of our sins. You know, people have asked me, people that aren't even in church, do Christians sin? Or what, what happens after, after a Christian sins? Well, I'll tell you this. When you are baptized in the name of Jesus, that wipes out every sin that you made, you committed before. But then going forward, God doesn't say you're going to be perfect. You're never going to sin one time. He doesn't say that. As a matter of fact, John is very clear. He says, 
If we say that we sin not, we have no sin, we lie. He's not even nice about it. He just says you're lying. No one likes to be called a liar. But he says if you say you're not, you don't sin, you're lying. But here's the thing. He says if we confess, now this is where it matters. And you see sometimes people misappropriate scripture. Here's John talking to church people. People that have already been baptized in his name. Some people grab the scripture and say, ah, oh, all you got to do is just confess. No, he says if you confess your, your, your sins, he's faithful and just. Why is God faithful and just? Because you went down in his name. You went down in his name. You got the blood of Jesus applied to you. So when you sin and you ask God forgiveness, he's faithful to what you want to do. He's faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh, so when you stand before him at judgment, you know what? The sin is already on him. Uh, yes. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, one, one thing that I, I've combated all my ministry life is this whole notion of once saved, always saved. It's an Americanized thinking. It really is. Where the sound bites, microwave, everything done in a snap of the flash, and you know, it's not that way. Just what's the least I have to do, and that's all i got to do, and I'm good to go. I can do whatever I want to do from now on. It doesn't work that way. As a right. matter of fact, when I was getting my license, one of the things we had to answer a question was about once saved, always saved. What do you, what do you feel about it? And this is a scripture that I use, because I think it's a powerful scripture to actually bring up this point that that's, that's, that's a farce. It's right. not true. Right. God is interested in how you live your life. You don't just get to say, oh, I'm saved and now I can just do what I want to do. I was saved back then. I did this. I did that. It doesn't work that way. God's not a fool. He understands. He watches us. He knows us. As a matter of fact, Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not with just compromise and I can get away with whatever I want to get away with. It doesn't work that way. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 16, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous, he's talking to the church in Corinth, wild bunch, church of Corinth, they had idols and all that kind of stuff prior to coming to God, but they, they came to God with all these, these notions, ideas, but he talks to them, he says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, the reason I chose this scripture when I was getting my license is because of that word inherit. Inherit when you say inherit, that means that we're there's some kind of relationship, right? right. If you're set to inherit something, I can't inherit something from brother brother uh, Carlisle. I'm not in his family. Right. I can't, you know, so people don't inherit something from somebody that's not in your family. Right. He's talking to his family, right. the family of God. That's good. Right. He says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Right. Be not deceived." Right. Right. He says, "Don't fool yourself." Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. There's a lot of things in there that people do, and they'll think that, you know, they think that they're okay. Right. He says, if you're doing these things, you're not going to make it. And he says, and such were some of you, in verse number 11, but you are washed. But you are sanctified, but you are justified right. by the name of Jesus, right. and the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we still have to understand that if we, just because, you know, you, you were washed, there's a lifestyle we have to live. We have to right. stay away from different yeah. things. Because if you, if you don't say, we'll pull you back into that. Right. Right. It's like you chop down a tree. And you think you got it, but now some sprouts start coming up, and all of a sudden, if you're not careful, that tree will grow right back up all over right. again. Right. Praise God. So we, there's some things that we have to, we have to be mindful of. Right. <laughs> now there's some judgment day outcomes. Revelations 21 and 7 and 21 and 8. I want to read those two verses in the next few minutes, but I want to say this: that death has a twofold meaning. So death has a twofold meaning. Death is, of course, the death of our physical bodies, but then there's what the Bible calls, and we're going to read here in a second, what's termed as the second death. The second death is that time between you dying, standing before judgment, and now what's next. 
That is the second death if you face death the second time. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Revelation 21 and 7 says this. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Now then he flips it. He says, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable. Now listen, if God calls something an abomination, <laughs> Come on. I'm not going to do it. Because now he tells you, the end, this is like the end of the book, right? Where Revelation is the last, chap the last right. book in the Bible. Right. And this is the second to the last chapter of Revelations. And now he's talking about the, abom the abominable. They're part of this. The fearful, unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers. Now he put them in a, he put them above murderers. If you're abominable before God, you're doing something that stinks in his nostril. Abominable really has a, has a connotation of, of smell or things that go up to your nostrils. But it is a stench to God's nostrils. And he puts that above murderers. He says murderers. Then he says whoremongers. So, you know, and then he says sorcerers. Then he says idolaters. And then here's a category that we don't want to be in. But it's so easy to fall into. All liars. Why do you think you put a, 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 the word all in front of that? In the Greek is omni. And it means all. But, you know, we like to categorize our lives, right? We like to categorize them. This is, a, this is a little white lie, or this is this one's, you know, it, it stretches the truth a little bit. He says, all liars. You know, he says that we are to work out our own salvation. With fear and trembling. We don't have time to sweep anything under the rug. Right. If your conscience condemns you, this is what this is what the Word of God says. God is greater than your heart. If your heart condemns you, if your heart is saying this is wrong or something like that, and, and it happens to us, we're, we're human. You can get yourself involved in something, and all of a sudden it's like there comes the condemnation. And when that happens, there needs to be a backing up. Yeah, right. You need to listen to it. Yeah. Because the Bible talks about, Paul talks about having your conscience seared, as it were, with a hot iron. Mm. Calloused, beyond feeling. When God can't talk to you, or you can't be embarrassed, or you can't be shocked, or you I don't want to get to the place that I'm not sensitive. When God touches me, I just want to melt and just, yeah, I just want to, I want the tears to come out and say, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it may be something somebody says, oh, that's nothing, that's little. I don't want to be the guy that says that's little. Right. I want to say to God, I'm not condemning anybody else, I, but it's me yeah. working my own salvation out of right. fear and trembling. Right. Yes. I want to be right. in a position right. that I allow God to put yes, those disciplines Lord. in my life that allow me to walk in the path that he set before me. Yes. Amen. We have yes. to have that. We have to have that surrendering to God because when you surrender to God and you allow God to lead you, listen, he's going to lead you to a place in the paths, the Bible says, of righteousness. Amen. How many want to be led Woo! in the path of righteousness? Amen. Amen. I want my life to be led by Him. Because I know that I won't be a part of this last group where He says, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Come on. What Jesus came to do is to keep everybody from the second death. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die once. That's physical body. But then the judgment. And then after judgment, you will either hear one of two things. Enter. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Or you'll hear the other thing. It says, and it's not even talking to you. Cast him into outer darkness where there's going to be gnashing of teeth. I want to hear well done. I think everybody here wants to hear well done. Praise God. And you know what? God wants to tell everybody well done. He says it's not his will that any should perish. That's right. But that all would come to yes. salvation. Everybody would come to repentance. Yes. Praise God. And give him a chance. 
the blood that he shed on Calvary Hallelujah. to be poured into your, on yes. your life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. On a daily basis. You know, we talked about picking up our cross the other week. It's important. When I'm picking up my cross and I'm following <laughs> him, when I'm picking up my cross and I'm following him, I'm allowing that blood of Jesus all over every day. Yeah. Praise God. That's why in your prayer every day, you need to have a repentance in your prayer. A praise when you start your prayer off. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. But then there needs to be somewhere where you say, God, you've seen everything I've done in 24 yeah, hours right, or right. less time I pray. God, I'm asking you, Lord God, to forgive me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I, I just want to walk in a way that I'm pleasing to God yes. every single day. Praise God. You can do that. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God. You can put that whole armor on of God. And you can walk out in the world. You can be that witness that God wants you to be. And you can also be that light, praise God. And your good works that you do are the things that reflect God. And people can see him in you. Amen. Give him praise. Yes. It can be the thing that draws people to God. God wants to use each and every one of us Amen. in that way. Amen. Praise God. Yes. But after life, the thing that's next is the judgment where God makes a decision. But it's based upon our decisions. Let's stand today. Yes. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After life. Hallelujah. The thing that's next is what you prepare for. Hell is a place that's prepared for unprepared people. And heaven is a place where there has been some calculated efforts to allow God to lead one home. Praise God. These altars are open this morning. Hallelujah. God, if you want to talk to God this morning, these altars are open. I, I ask you after life, what's next? And, and, and God and you have a conversation. God and you speak. God speaks to your heart even at this moment. Hallelujah. God talks to your spirit right now. God moves throughout this place right now. And God is whispering in the ears. God's tugging at hearts. God's speaking right now to you and to me. He's answering a question. What do you think is next? These altars are open for you to talk to God. I invite you down today, right now, to talk to God. I invite you, hallelujah, to, to speak to Him, hallelujah, because he's, he's ready to hear from you. His presence is here. His ears are, are attentive to hear your cries. He's here to minister to you. He's here to work in your life. He's here to walk, hallelujah, up and down these aisles and speak to our hearts today, to change us, to make us what He wants us to be. God, hallelujah. I want you to work in my life. I want you to do, Lord God, what only you can do in my life, God. I surrender to you, God. I surrender to you, God. I give you, Lord God, everything in me, God. I give you everything, Lord God. Lord, you are perfect, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we need you, God. We need you, Lord, this hour, Lord. Things all around our lives, God. Lord, there's no turning back, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, stay focused.